My name is Matt Larson, and I'm a fifth-year mathematics PhD student at Stanford, advised by Jun Ha and Ravi Vakil. I work in combinatorial algebraic geometry, which is an area of math in between combinatorics and algebraic geometry. Combinatorics is the study of finite objects, for example, graphs. A graph is a collection of vertices, which you can think of as points in the plane, and edges joining pairs of them, which you can think of as lines between certain of the vertices. So here I have a picture of a graph. Combinatorics tends to be very concrete. Algebraic geometry is a study of solutions to polynomial equations. So for example, x squared plus y squared minus 1 is a polynomial, and if you set it equal to 0, you get a circle, which is a nice shape. Algebraic geometry tends to be very abstract, but there are powerful tools to study problems in algebraic geometry. Combinatorial algebraic geometry can mean two things. One thing is that you can try to apply combinatorics to solve algebraic geometry problems. There are a lot of algebraic geometry problems that people don't really know how to solve, and sometimes you can understand special cases, or maybe the whole thing, in terms of combinatorics problems. Those combinatorics problems might not really be easier, but at least they're more concrete. You can try to do something. I've used this approach to study problems in singularity theory. So here I have the graph y squared minus x cubed equals zero, and you can see that the graph looks a little funny at the origin. At the origin, at zero, zero, there's what's called a singularity, and people are interested in understanding the properties of singularities. I've used combinatorial methods to solve some problems in singularity theory. The other thing that you can try to do is apply algebraic geometry to solve combinatorics problems. There are lots of simple sounding combinatorics problems that people have no idea how to solve. And sometimes you can try to relate it to some problem in algebraic geometry and then use some deep tool from algebraic geometry to solve the problem. For example, using algebraic geometry, one can show that if you fix the number of vertices, then the number of graphs with zero edges, one edges, two edges, and so on, form a unimodal sequence, meaning it goes up and then it goes down. Here I have a table of the number of graphs on six vertices with k edges for k equals zero, one, two, and so on. I'm grateful to ARCS for funding my research and enabling me to work on problems in combinatorial algebraic geometry.